kids that week. And I request everyone to stand up. And, uh, we open it up with an opening prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this service that you are going to attend. And Heavenly Father, come and have your way. We are nothing without you, Lord. Come and pray in the midst. Come and speak to us throughout your word, through your praise and worship. And let you, as we lift up our worship, Lord, let your glory fill, fill us. In Jesus' name we are praying.
a great God alone. You are so great. You are so powerful. You are awesome, Lord our God. You are mighty, Lord our God. You are one of the working God alone. The God of the miracles. The God of signs and wonders, Lord. And Lord of God, the God of grace. Lord, bless you. Lord, we bless you, our Holy Lord. Rama Gasara, Rama Gasara, Rama Rama Gasara, Rama Rama Rama
They accuse the Dorit of looking for us. Oh, yeah. Here you can see that we Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57, uh, just uh, take us through the uh, last verse. Read. Read there, Isaiah 57. And I'm um, using a simple version. It says, Come ye, you children of sorcery. I almost lost my first sorcery hit. Like someone is calling you a child of a sorcerer or mm. a child of sorcery, you know what that can be. So offspring of adultery mm. and prostitution. Oh God. You know, most of us are most likely oh, yeah. children in the two world. We have children of adultery. Some people are children of prostitution. Mm. And continue to ask, who are you mocking? Oh God. Against whom you open your mouth wide and stick out your tongue. Oh. Uh, normally adults don't do that, but children know how to do those expressions of opening their tongue out of their mouth. Now we are being asked, who are we to do that? Are you children of the devil, offspring of lies? Oh. So we know we are rebellious in the kingdom of God. Oh. Offspring of lies. Oh. Who console, who console yourselves with idols and with every green tree? Oh. Who slaughter children in the valley and under the rocks? So let's pray that that description, that accusation will oh. not stand oh. when we come before the Lord. Oh. When we are born and our generations are, are, are before us, they will not continually be accused oh. of being children of Oh. Children of sorcery, oh. children of lies, yes. children who are potential sources oh. and potential sacrifices, oh. human sacrifices. Let's pray for our our Lord, let us Lord, 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 Oh, sexual perversion is a very bad. Wash us, Lord, our God, of all sins, Lord Jesus. Oh, my God, sexual immorality, oh God. Of all masturbations, Lord Jesus, oh God. Of oh, sexual lust, oh my God. Well, it's also polygamy, Lord. Oh, Rikama Zene, my enemy. Lord, you are a pure and a holy God. And you demand the holiness, you demand blamelessness, Lord our God. Father, we stand in a place of repentance, of sin, Lord. Repent. And in the New Testament, Colossians confirms that. Colossians clearly also says that in Colossians 1 verse 16, it says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from the devil. Parts of your life that belong to the earth, such as sexual immorality, mm. moral corruption, mm. lust, mm. evil desire, mm. and greed, which is a idolatry. Oh. The wrath of God is coming upon disobedient people oh. because of these things. So let's continue to pray that the wrath of God will not come on oh. us because of these things. Oh. The things that are being mentioned in my time, oh. the things that are being repeated in the remote. So we come to that place where we continue to seek God and ask for forgiveness. Oh Lord, Father, we repent, Lord, as a church, as families, as individuals, Lord our God. All these sexual desires, the last of the flesh, Lord our God. All oh, this kind of sexual passion is last. Oh Lord, forgive us, Lord of pornography. Forgive us of pornography, Lord. Oh Lord, homosexuality, Lord Jesus. The sins of polygamy, where many of us come from. Polygamy, Lord, all those wickedness and sins, Lord, our Father. Ask you, Lord, to be gracious, Lord. Lord, forgive us for what trespasses, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord, our God, because. You are a pure God, and you are a holy God, and you demand your holiness in our hearts, O oh Lord. Father, we ask you to wash and cleanse us, O oh God, of 
born mad and kind of unrighteousness, Lord God. For you, Lord God, you, you demand sexual purity, Lord. You demand righteousness, Lord. You demand selflessness and avoid this heavenly Father. Lord, forgive us where, Lord, we have misused our body, the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can see those of us who walk in seen our structures, there's lots of things we've seen with the group. Let's continue to thank God for His divine provision within our personal places, our families, but also that provision within us here at Trinity. We see that uh, we are less than 10 years in uh, this establishment, but we are able to put our structures and God that's because of the God Father. Let's thank God for that. Father, thank you for the construction progress, Lord, especially the roof by this time and stage, Lord Jesus. Lord, we stand amazed at what you, Lord, have done and what is doing, Lord Jesus. Father, we stand amazed of your graces, of your mercies, of your provision, Lord, of skill and expertise, oh Father. We stand amazed, Lord God, for the progress of your house, your sanctuary, Lord. We give you thanks and give you praise, Lord our God. We thank you that you have begun the work. Lord, you shall bring it to completion. We adore you, Lord our God, for your faithfulness, mercies, and compassion, Lord our God. Father, we thank you for your provision, for the resources of the Son, Lord, and the advice of God, and the blessings, Lord our God. The time to the album is come, Lord. All the stoke marks are going to come, Lord. The doors and the blocks, Lord. And the terrace are going to be like down, Lord. And all the work is glad to start with the explanation of the world. All the sort of things. Thank you, Lord. And we look to you, Lord, my Lord. And also the war, Lord, in the Russia and Ukraine, Lord. Father, bring that man, those matters before you. The wars, Lord, our God, in the African continent, Lord. We pray for your grace, Lord. The destination, Lord, just of the, the Congolese, Lord, who have suffered for so much, Lord. Oh, Lord, we pray for peace. Lord, in the Congo region, 
the African Lord, in Somalia, Lord, our God. Keep all of us with bread and glory. Preserving us at life, O Father. Oh, the grace of peace, Father. All of us.
That's my chapter Solomon. That's my Rachel and the area. That's my Peter Jimmy. Peter oversees our administration and also our human resource. And we thank God that uh, uh, we are building a system that will be sustained over the years, uh, making sure that we do things the right way uh, to the glory uh, of our God. Once again, I want to welcome you to the Lord's house. Thanks so much for braving the rain. I uh, know many of us, maybe the bed was really warm, uh, but somehow we managed to brave it and uh, come must go to church. So we want to appreciate you. The Lord reach you, reach you a blessing for that uh, sacrifice. Uh, let's go to pray for our brother, uh, Freddy Kamoga. He's the husband of uh, Stagladis Kamoga, who is part of our church. Uh, he was admitted in the hospital once again. Uh, they are still, they've been there since uh, last week. Let's go to pray for those who are in that kind of situation, those who are well for God's divine healing and uh, for His grace. Uh, perhaps let me just do a quick update uh, of uh, our building. Last week, uh, we had committed and we promised you that uh, by this time round, we would uh, use the testimony you have given us so far to ensure that we roof the, 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 the lower part of the roof of the church. That was a plan, and actually, uh, bookings were made with the party. But something happened on the snap. What happened was that uh, the person who took our order, for some weird reason, didn't hear the blue color of the roof and did green instead. So uh, as we're about to get ready uh, to receive, uh, it came through that actually the color of the sheet that made was green instead of blue. So I told them before we are accountable to our congregation, we will not receive the green roof, but we want the blue ones. And so they apologized and he promised us that uh, this Friday, this week, the blue roof iron sheets, 20 feet, 26 gauge, will be ready. Yeah, let's keep going to go. And like we have committed, we are saying let's begin with whatever money comes in. So we are sure that. Uh, Friday will have the sheets for the lower roof and also the uh, vestry room at the back. In fact, if you pass by, the trusses have been put, were put in there last week at uh, the back. Uh, my family, we made a, a big pledge uh, last week and we found God that we've been able to uh, begin to fight the elephant by peace. So we might put uh, uh, some down payment uh, this week, ending, and we're trusting God that uh, this coming week will do even a bigger one, so that we will keep on closing in uh, to what's in to God's house. And we've agreed with the roofer that uh, actually not agreeing, we have not taken any action. Last week, by more money came in from a few of our friends. Uh, close to about 16 million shillings, which also advanced the roofer. Let's go to the good place. And, and so the goal now, okay, the roofer is left with the 16 he has in his hands. He needs an extra 14 to make it 30 million. So to begin dealing with the middle side, middle bit of the roof, that is the, the middle trusses. The, the bigger one, do that kind of bigger things. So, please, we need the pledges coming in so that we are able to have this work going. We are believing God that in this season of November and December, we should be able to roof God's house. So that as we move towards the beginning of January 2024, we are out of this veranda and going to the house of the Lord to worship Him. So, uh, please, let's work at it, all of us. 
you know, it is a noble cause. Let's work at it. It's going to be sacrificial. Like we were talking about with my wife the other day, like, oh my God, this one is really big, but we have to build because we need to make sure we move forward together. So please be part of this and we build and finish God's house. Today, we are coming to the conclusion uh, of uh, our series of closing uh, sexual morality doors. And the topic today is the cross won sexual sins. Please also remember that today is the last Sunday of the month and therefore we gather the Lord's table. So we took advantage of the power of the cross to address the issue of sexual sins and be victorious. I say the cross won sexual sins and of course many other sins we are won. Actually all sins we are won. And sin cannot stand the power of the cross. On the cross, we become victors and winners of sin. On the cross, we stand upright before God. By the cross, we stand as righteous, sanctified, and purified believers. So the cross is the answer, and the cross we're going to hang on as we deal with these things of sexual sins. Now, as we have one communion today, I pray that God will help us to renew our covenant with God for sexual purity, whether single or married. Like I said last week, the devil's temptation in sexual sins doesn't matter about age or sex. Men and female, young and old, tall and short, married or single, are all tempted in this evil sin. Therefore, we need to make sure that we stand our ground over the sexual iniquity and wickedness. Today, the life we live in the end times, it's no secret, Hollywood movies, social media, and billboards glorifies and constantly bombards our minds with all manner and kind of uh, sexuality in all its wickedness. The challenge complicates our spiritual, emotional, and psychological lives on a daily. In the most recent history, we have had what has been called the sexual revolution also known as the sexual liberation, which was a social movement that challenged the traditional and biblical codes of sexual behavior uh, that as we know it in the scriptures. This began way back in the 1960s and 1970s, but its impact has been so great and evil that today the world has become much more wicked as it was before then. What we see after this revolution Sexual liberation including the increase of acceptance of sex outside of traditional heterosexual monogamous relationships, whereby uh, they, were, they were opposing the marriage that God made it to be from the scriptures. And these men and women, uh, as we say in many movies today and also media, they are on a rampage to do away with the word of God. Because actually, protest against God is intended uh, sex kind of way. And, and today, movies are everywhere painting a picture. It is all right. It is okay. But you and I know it's not okay. What else happened in that same revolution? There was the normalization of contraception and appeal. Now, let me say this that uh, there is nothing with public with the, with the family uh, back controls. But the problem is that. The initial original idea was not about controlling how many babies going to have, but it was about people to have sex freely with no limitations, uh, but without getting pregnant. And so that was part of the background. Of course, uh, we can have other arguments towards it. But these things came from around that time and those reasons. And so out of that, we saw public nudity. Today, many women dress the way they want to. And uh, they do all those many things. They are doing all the things to pull you into the sexual arena. And in there, you are going to be uh, ghettoized uh, in that wickedness scene of wickedness. And I cannot forget, uh, today, on billboards, uh, there was one that happened, I think it was last year, or the year before COVID or something, whereby it was about supposed to be a tire sale. In other words, it's five advertising tires. But on the same billboard, with this other woman on, uh, trying to, make these appeals for sex as well. 
today water companies, uh, you and I, I'm, I'm sure, the, your source water bottles. It's a water bottle, yes, but uh, and the point of course is water. But the picture of it, this young lady, literally she's pulling up her, her browsers that actually you can see the nipple and down in there. Why? All these are the sexual movements we are seeing in the world today. There's another billboard, I think it's in Kasangat, where this woman is taking water, but actually the water droplets are falling into her breasts. And so you actually, instead of attending to the water product is promoting, the eyes are naturally bound to end up in the wrong places. Why? All these are the sexual revolution the devil is at to pull people away from sexual purity and cause the minds to be intoxicated with those kind of sexual behavior. And we see in them, this same season, a pornography became a key thing. And of course, by that time, there are movies. Today, right on your very phone, your very iPad or computer, you can access all these many app applications which are evil and wicked. Let me speak this as a church man, I swear. Do not go into pornography. Pornography is addictive, just like alcohol is addictive. Keep your mind pure and holy. Because the moment you, you, you watch one, you're about to watch the next one. Never give the devil your finger because you're taking the whole palm. The devil is a thief and is a proper thief and a liar. So don't go into pornography. And then, of course, premarital sex among the singles is a challenge today. Today, we live in a world where you're never sure if the couple you're wedding has reverence whether they are being sexually pure or not. But God is calling upon the young people also to be sexually pure. If you're not married, stay as you are and preserve yourself until the day you say, I do. And if you're married, then keep your marriage and stand your ground be counted by the grace of God. And so we find all the things coming in. Homosexuality, masturbation, alternative forms of sexuality and legalization of abortion in wealth nations, all followed after that. And you know, God is not half of all those things because they are defying the original code of conduct, the Bible, God gave to us. In the scriptures, we find in verse scriptures like uh, uh, Leviticus 18, an entire chapter of God is like, do not, do not, do not, do not, entire chapter. Why? God is seeking for sexual purity. Why? Because when we are sexually pure, the blessings of God will come forth in our, our lives and we become spiritually stronger. Those who are compromisers can never be spiritually strong because they have got this whole log of sexual sins in their necks and they can never stand up as they ought to be in the very beginning. Please understand that sexual sins are demonic and satanic in nature. And because they are, they need God's supernatural power to overcome. And that's why today we are saying the cross overcame the sexual sins uh, in there. And so the cross is the answer to sexual sins. In the scripture, God warned his people, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually, sins against their own body. And that's so true. All other sins are done outside. But this particular one is on the body. And the body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And God hates it. God cannot see the same body where it is being defiled. And he also sits in the same different body in there. God is warning us, married or single, young or old, tall or short, black or white, free sexual immorality. Why? Because of the consequences we're going to see as shortly. Now, these sins, sexual sins, be it adultery, or fornication, or pornography, uh, or any other in that category, have consequences. You do it, a few moments of pleasure, but the price you pay will be a lifetime, unless you went back to God in repentance. And that's actually the worst thing about these sexual sins. They are more or less like, no, 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 it's just a moment to take long and all that. Yes, there's a lot of pleasure involved in it, 
but the problem is the consequences are overwhelming. Let's check a few of those consequences. In there, we find unplanned pregnancies. They show up. When such babies are born, they are unwanted. They grow up by faith with uncertain future if God does not intervene. Such babies grow up rejected because they are not wanted. They came, so to say, at the wrong time as if those who gave up, they didn't know what they were doing, will not yield to that. Then in there, with the sexual sin, we find abortion, the recovery mission. Then we find, you know, where people think that when you do an abortion, it is a right. And God doesn't care because they are just a small fetus. The right word is what can a mother. And a person who has done abortion is a murderer. You are equivalent to a killer, to a robber, to a, you know, all those. So the consequences come with it that sometimes with abortion, women, women, women's bodies sometimes never recover. And as such, they become childless thereafter. Such a sin to bring forth constant shame. You know, the devil tells you, it will all be all right. Now, this is a problem with the devil being your master. The devil is a bad master. He never keeps secrets. The moment it happens, yes, in secrecy, it will be announced on mouthtops. Somehow the news will come out, what, what they did, until the living. You know, the devil is that bad in life. He will let it out. They, they want to be able to get back before you wait. So you have this constant shame and embarrassment. And then you battle with continuous lies to cover up, pretend so that all remain is a secret, which it never becomes. The consequences of sexual morality and adultery are weird and many. Delayed and authentic marriages come also into play. Some people fail to get married or get to get married because of this sin, of this iniquity and transgression. I would imagine God is thinking, well, if you couldn't keep yourself pure, how can I give you my son or my daughter? Because we're doing the same things. And so the late marriages, or oh, when they do happen, there are always issues. And of course, because God hates sexual sins, there are many sexual transmitted diseases, STDs, you find HIV and gonorrhea and syphilis and all these hips and simplex and all these. God is just making a statement, don't do it. When you do it, there will be consequences there. Uganda many years ago, we battled with HIV. The dish of Rakai massacred others were literally wiped out villages. Why? Because God was angry against the sin of sexual immorality. And today, HIV is prevailing. How does it, is it why is it transmitted? One of the better ways, but the primary process. I'm going to say, do not do it. Where there is all this iniquity and sins of sexuality, there are emotional ties. We talk about sexual husbands and sexual, I mean, spiritual wives and spiritual husbands. They come through this. And there are these emotional ties, which ties and, you know, breaks marriages and break vows that we are made on the wedding day. And then there are gross mistrust due to multiple partners in marriage meant for only two people. Because, I mean, you just imagine if this wife knows the man goes out or vice versa, how can trust be built? Because when you go out, it's like her. Uh, there she goes. Or where he goes. He's never sure. So there's mistrust. And there's all these kind of complications come with it. And God is calling upon you and me to be pure in our sex lives. And then last week we mentioned about polygamy rather than a week. And then polyandry. Can you imagine? Many of us, <laughs> I think we come from certain families where the fathers were not faithful. And so you were put up, so am I. But we need to resolve not to do what our fathers did. We must take a firm stand. And you know, we, we have a challenge that you and I are the very first generation of Christianness of our lives. So there's so much stake on our hands. And God is going upon you and upon me that we stand because when we do, our children will have an excuse whatsoever. The generation is behind us. Is it an easy job? No, it's tough and tight. It will be demanding. But it has paid the price. There's no plan B or C. 
And so we find those polygamy needs. And then we find also women willing to have more than one partner. Polyandry. I showed you that picture of uh, the other woman, you know, fashion too. There's a communist woman I told you about who has five of them. Five men. I don't know how she does it. Neither will I able to ask because it's not useful at all. It's all nonsense. God is calling upon us to be faithful. One husband, one wife, period, finished. The consequences of, 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 of adultery and fornication comes poverty and insufficiency. Let me explain this. If a, one man has got three or four women and it produced three to four children, where will he get a school fees to pay for those children? And so the resources that are a journal, everything is spent all under the consequences of unfaithfulness. If God has given you a husband or a wife, stick that one, it is enough. Or else your resources will be divided over and over again, and before you know it, you are in luck. That's why many of the children of the families, they suffer so much want and luck. Of course, there are other cases. Where this man, uh, you know, he has got many of them and he has all the money to do it. Uh, in the village where I grew up in, there was a man who had uh, many children and, of course, out of many wives. You know what he would do? He had a truck, uh, he had a rolling. So at the end of the term, he would have all the 10, 12 children on the truck and take them to the boarding schools. But, you know, just imagine if there were three or four or five. You would have got a better car, not a truck, not a really like cows. So, polygamy is dangerous. Adultery is dangerous. All the things that are done outside what God has given to us have got consequences with them. In other cases of polygamy and the adultery, there is the use of witchcraft. Why? To gain favor, you know, before this one man or woman. Which one comes into play? It is rare to find a family in polygamy where there is no uh, witchcraft, unless there is God. God helps us, brethren, that we stand, and God is calling upon our church to be sexually pure. In the recent past, God has been bringing us dreams and visions about this, all of us to walk in purity, single or married, man or woman, sexual purity. By that, the doors of God's blessings will be opened. By that, we will have sure certainty of the generations that behind us. With that, we will be able to push ourselves into the realm of God to do the will and the purpose of God. And also, to live for free lives. The few amens. Other consequences, there's hatred. This unity finds grounds to that all the families as captives because it's competition of this one man, of these resources, of this other woman, and next to extra. And you know, Hebrews tells us to keep the marriage very pure. But when there is this evil sin, the marriage bed is defiled. Now, some may think it's the physical bed. Yes, in a sense, but seemingly in God's language, once you are married, you carry a bed with you wherever you are. Hallelujah. <laughs> so the Lord demands that, you know, we keep our souls in purity and in holiness. The good news is, regardless of how powerful and destructive such a sins may be, the power of the cross is sufficient to break all physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual bondages and chains that come because of sexual immorality. The power of the cross is sufficient to set captives free from sexual bondages. The power of the cross is sufficient to break all kind of pornography and all kinds of sexual ties and souls to wickedness. Now, we live in a world 
technology. And as you on your internet, many things come up and pop up. People who are seemingly to be good guys, they want to talk to you, a beautiful lady, or, or ladies want to talk to men. Let me tell you, some of those people you see on the screens are not ugly people. Many of them are demons. The mermaids who show up their head and we think it's a beautiful girl, but actually it's not a girl. Those are demons running. Uh, if you have said what about this uh, video clip I saw it was on social media. This beautiful girl gets off the plane and there are two men who are coming and trying to wait for someone coming off the same plane. But because she was so beautiful, after she was, but listen to the whole story. The, this man began to follow her up. She goes to the parking lot and left her car in there, jumps into her car and begins driving off. This man, because they were obsessed with her beauty, began to drive and also following her up. So they drove quite a long stretch, but the man persisted that they went to you know, make some proposals. The woman eventually drove her car by the beach side. Beach. Now, beaches are good, but let's be careful. Some of the boys on those beaches are not other people. They are ambassadors of water spirits. So, this woman just gets out of her car, gets out of her shoes, and begins to walk. And these men are following quite closely. Human disappeared to the sea. That was the end of the story. May the Lord help us. Some of these people who look extraordinarily bright and extraordinarily beautiful or handsome go slow. The men look cool and attractive and you don't know this go slow. And some of us may think maybe. Your husband is an idiot. He doesn't get it. But the other guy knows what be smarter. Go slow. Some of the men are thinking, oh, this woman might have married now. The way she looks, she was sweet 16 now. With all these things and go slow. Let us stay home and go back home. The cross closes doors of all sexual immorality and their consequences. How does it do it? Number one, the cross offers room for confession of all sexual sins and you get restored. And the power of the cross, all our sins are forgiven. 1 Peter 2 24 says, Who himself bore our sins in his own body? On the cross, all of the tree that we have in time to sin might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed, for you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and the master of your souls. Resist the urge to make excuses for your sin of sexual immorality. So we need to stand our ground and be able to stand in the way of Christ our Lord and Savior. Number two, by the cross, cut off all sexual covenants. Every sexual involvement is a covenant. When we are married, whenever you have it, you are renewing the right covenant in the right place. But any other person outside it, that is a sexual covenant. So if you are sleeping around the 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, there you go, with all the many covenants. May God help us that we walk in the way of the Lord. By the power of the cross, we are able to cut off all these sexual covenants. Whether we are the passing agreements or contacts, let's cut them off in the name of the Lord. Matthew 26 says, For this is the blood, my blood, of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. Jesus has given us the remedy. 
that on the cross we can renew a bloody covenant, not a sex covenant. And so we stand by this covenant. Remember, God works in a covenant setup. He wants you to make your covenant sure. And that's why we are gathering today on the Israeli community table to renew our covenant with God and walk the path of righteousness. Bloodshed on the cross is more than able to dissolve all such your sins and the kinds of covenants made during such your sins, no matter where they were done, when, where, or with the whole. It is sufficient. Number three, ask God for a spiritual mentor or be an accountable partner with a godly standing person by the cross of Jesus. Some of these things you can't walk with alone. You need someone to walk with you and get out of it and stand by the power of the cross. The Bible says, as I sharpen his hand, so one person sharpen is another. And so as we walk with another person, you can walk out pornography, you can walk out of polygamy, you can walk out of adultery, we can walk out of social sins. There will be last for thoughts. Seek for counsel and for help, and the Lord will help us by his grace, two by two, to make a difference and move forward. Proverbs 99 says, Give instructions to a wise man, and will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man and will increase in learning. So we need someone else to work with us. Number four, get seriously committed in God's church and fellowship. To some of us, church is a bite away. Anything happening to you, church is a bad thing to be put on the list. And yet, if today was a, a, a Monday or a Tuesday, even if rain was that much, you would be in office all time. True or false? Hello. True. But church has such a range. Really? Are we really committed to God? We must be committed to God and to church and the things of God and give them time. Because by doing that, we are overcoming all this sin that we would have come our way. We are in a safer position. May God help us pray that we commit ourselves to God in the fellowship to a higher level. Somebody read your statement the other day that if the tithe we bring to God to church on a Sunday was the money to be used to build our mansions in heaven, Many of us will live in small hearts because of the little money who brought God. And yet, we spend lavish on all other things except church. I'm going to call us together to commit ourselves. Because in church, we align ourselves with God's purposes. May we resolve to be committed church members. And by the way, it's so strange. We are many. Those of you you see, the brethren choose not to. For whatever reasons. Pastor, I was on the church school and miss my mother. But yeah, that's all, miss my mother. Come touch us and then go to this man. Then others, Pastor, I said that I need to wash my clothes. And you think, why do you wash your sons? All kinds of reasons. But the only spell of our us to overcome such sins and other sins, we must commit ourselves to church. Hebrews, the Spirit of the Lord says, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day. The day are evil and the day is also approaching. The Lord is coming back. Jephthah, never forget this cry. After everything is done, we must all go together to heaven. So whatever you do, let that be in your mind. 
Come in church. Come for prayer altar. Give your tithe and offerings. Do it in God's heart, church. All things combined together, we are making a road to glory to heaven. And that is our major call. To make sure that we eventually end up in heaven. Number five, if you want to overcome such a sin, then guard your heart and thoughts from such activities and focus on the cross. Every day, refocus your heart, refocus your mind, refocus your thought processes. Second Corinthians 4 says, cast them down imaginations and every high thing that exalts of against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Refocus your mind. Refocus your thoughts. Refocus what goes into you, whether by sight or by ears or by understanding. Or else the devil will be, will be close and bring you to sin and iniquity. And remember, the devil's bottom line, whether it's sex or alcoholism, or lying, or cheating, or stealing, is to drag a soul to hell. That the out made the most purpose. All the last sins, whatever, could do political, and other, bottom line to drag them to hell. And so we're here at the church to make sure whatever we do, we go to heaven. Amen. To the place of God. Amen. That's where we belong. That is our destination. That's our number one call. That Bottom line, we will all reach heaven in glory. Number six, get out of body company. Those who are immoral, get out. Because if you don't, they'll keep you in there. You become part of their earth. You are bonded with them. And before you know it, time is running out. And then finally, hell fire. Now God is telling us to get out of all those body company. All those who are immoral. Who are knowing God for the cross of Jesus? What do you with a lot of people? Vulgar, insensitive, drunkards, liars. If you work with them, let your dealing with them be limited to your work. Finish, not beyond that. Get out of bad company. This includes false influencers. Marriage failures. They will tell you, you know, there's nothing much in marriage. What are you in there? A friend of ours, one of the boss, was Russian. And he's telling him that you see, wherever you go in the country, uh, marriage is fail. Many cases, also lost mine. So he cares nothing. Now, you must know whom do you relate to. Who knows about your secrets? Who, who is your confidant? Choose your company. Choose your group. Thank God we can't change our families or we come from our clans or our bloodlines or tribes, but we can change our friends. Those we have control. And we can surely do it up. Be mindful of those who choose to keep you keep company with. You cannot be an effective Christian alone. Be a faithful uh, fellowship church attendant and be committed in there. But not the wicked people out there. 1 Corinthians says, chapter 3, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. It's as simple as that. And number seven, <laughs> don't go for these TV shows. Either minimize or eradicate them. Those that compromise your faith, those TV shows, those movies, or video games, or apps, or that kind of music that lures you back into sinful thinking or lust, get out of it. Delete it. Kill it. Do everything you can and put it out of your system. Or else, it will drag you to such activity which will be seen and iniquity. Number eight. Periodically watch spiritual games, new moon and full moon season. Trust me, all these things, the six activities uh, have their climax usually at this new moon or full moon season. To many of us, those things are offensive, but I'm going to tell you, 
the devil so much season and times. We are now more towards the former season of the month of Kislev. November, December, sex is highest at this season because people are out there celebrating the birth of Jesus. They are having good Christmas. And in this season, you'll see lots and lots of pregnancies coming up which are never wanted by God. The devil is a lie. He is a thief. He came to school and destroy. So may we learn to watch times of, of the full moon season and the times that God has clearly said. And God desires that you and I be a man and woman who stand at the gate in prayer. Proverbs 8 34 says, Blessed is a man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and place fear upon the Lord. But you sin that against me wrongs, and he is also. All those who hate me love death. All those who hate God love death. But God doesn't want you to die. God wants us to live and declare the works of God. Let me end up with this point. A solution to sexual morality at the right time and prayerfully find your own love if you're single. All the singles should have said amen. Okay. And this is my son that said amen. He's 11. Uh, we we'll make a go in there. Sometimes prolonged singleness or being unmarried may be a source of a problem. So if you're single, I encourage us to believe God to the right partners. Sometimes choosing partners is a challenge to make to some because you're looking for qualities one up to thirty. He must have this, he must have this, he must have this, he must have up to thirty. Unfortunately, you can never find such. Sometimes we are advised as man counselors that if he has got an eighty percent or she has a seventy eight percent, take a step of faith and step in there. And then go and fix the twenty percent or the thirty percent along the way. After all, none of us are perfect, but all of us are work in progress. As you take a step of faith, you keep moving by the grace of God. So at the right time, make the decision to get married and get out of sexual immorality. Yeah. And God desires that once we get married, we keep our marriage vows. Some men, some women have a bad culture. They forget the vows they made to be faithful to the partners that married to. But we will be a caliber of the church of people that once we make our vows, we stand until the day to breathe our last. For those who are married like I am, we have no plan B or C or D or E or X. You know that. We made a decision and I keep on making, reminding us. We made a spouse during the day. There were no marriage that happened at night. Anybody was married at night? You got married at night. The Ghana Lord demands a marriage must be after 8 a.m. during the day and before 5 p.m. when he saw that day. So you made a spouse during the day. And the preacher asked you, would you marry this man? And you said yes. Not once, but two times. And he asked the, the other man, will you take this woman to be your wedded wife? You said yes. How many times? Two. And there are also witnesses. We cannot eat our words. We must stand. If she's not perfect, if it's not perfect, stand to God for a prayer. Say, so, Lord, the woman that I have, or the man that I have, has these glitches here and there, but we maintain and keep. Church, God is calling upon sexual purity and the cross overcame sexual sins. I want to invite you at this time to the Lord's table that you will be able to renew your vows to God. You renew your covenant with God. The blood is the blood of a covenant. 
Matthew says, 26, 28, For this is my blood of the covenant. And that's a covenant we want you to renew before the Lord this morning. Someone come and help me place on the altar. You're going to stand wherever you are. And the homecoming table is now open. Why? Please come. You receive the cup. You also receive the bread. Why? get the bread and the cup and please hold it and we'll do it all together. We'll do it all together. And as it comes your way or as you hold it in your hands will you begin to cross check your heart and your soul if there be any sexual sins and all sexual desires. And ask the Lord God to cleanse you by His blood. Such as saints do not choose man or woman. Whether you're young or old. Neither does it disrespect whether you are single or whether you are married. We all battle. But the Lord desires that we renew our covenant with our God. Welcome, the Lord's name.
Kumbina. He's a covenant keeping God. We want to hear it from you. Those of us who are married, the Lord is saying, let us be faithful for our spouses. And to them, for you who are singles, beautiful young ladies, handsome young men, what is saying? Be sexually pure. The problem is we must deal with pornography, lust, masturbation. The Lord wants us to be sexually pure. And then the blessings will flow, the glory will flow, miracles will flow, signings will flow, things will never be so will flow. Because God is the one that we are holy, we will see the blessings of Abraham, of Isaac and Jacob. Oh, Rabbi Sakaba. Come on, brothers, and make that commitment this morning. Right where you are. Make a commitment to work in the way of the Lord. Resolve in your heart. Resolve. Regardless of the temptations, God desires to work in his sexual purity. Oh, Rabbi Sakha. Oh, Lord, as a congregation of Yehudim Church, this morning we make a resolution. We make a resolve to be pure sexually in all other areas of life. But the Bible says, be holy before the way the Father is holy. And without holy, there is no one who sees the Lord. The man that sins, Lord, grumbling, anger, unforgiveness, rage. Oh, Lord, forgive us, Lord Jesus. We don't want to go to hell. We want heaven. Glory to God. Glory to God. God help us. God help us. We were the married father help us. To be examples. Some of us in our wedding rings are not on our fingers any longer. And that speaks volumes. God help us to be accountable to one another. To our spouses. To be faithful, Lord. God help us as marriage be able to display marriage in a godly way that our children will learn from us of God. Those who see us will learn from us of God. Keeping the marriage very pure. Lord help us. For the people are singles. In the midst of the sexual revolution of pornography, sex on phones and all those many things, we pray their minds will be pure and holy before And to the day they are given to marriage. Yesterday or Friday, session today, and I got here 
and as the December 14th, 2020. Now, there's an appeal to all of us. Those of us who have those nice shoes that do not fit you, nice, not strong, nice shoes, nice dresses for the young and the old. There are those scholastic materials, the diamonds in them. Some of you bought too many apple sets, apple rulers, there are many buy that go. So kindly, please bring them as so they don't gather dust during the holiday. So that you can take them to again serve the children that are in those two areas. So the scholastic materials are clothing, uh, sanitary wire for the young girls. So kindly bring them. That's effective today. I want to believe by 14th December, we should have all of them so that are nice. Back and back yeah. to the so, those you are, thank you uh, for your presence. Our leaders will bless you the time of offering. And then we expect to uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for continually providing for us. So, you give us immensely that that we can imagine, and that we don't even imagine, that we don't even hope for. Yes, because we have. Um, yes. You provide us, Lord, with finances, Lord, you provide us with jobs. Some of us even bless us, Lord, for what we don't even deserve. Yes. That we do not work for, but you give to us, you give consent to us, Lord. Basically, you provide for us our uh, money, Lord, you give our currency. Father, we pray this before you. We provide, we pray this before you so that you may continue to be a fulfilling block. Open the floodgates of heaven. Meet your people, King of God. 
Father, God, we thank you. Even those who are not feeling well, God. Yes. Those who have other problems, God. Yes. There is nothing you cannot do for the Lord Almighty. Father, we pray after the hungry men that, Father, you hear our individual prayers. Yes, Father, we thank you for the roofing of this church. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you are providing that you provided for the children of Israel, you, that they were able to give until there was excess. Yes, Lord. Father, for the Almighty, we know we have to be through oh, oh, in the past. Oh, but bad times do not live forever. Yes. Father, we ask that you unleash, unleash, unleash yes, the finances. Yes, so that you are people who be able to give, not yes. only to give, but even to start from yes, the Father, we thank you. Protect us as we go. Protect us. Cover us with the blood of Jesus. Yes. 